Dual Review is brought to you by Nexus, digitalcomics.com. On today's Dual Review, it's Nick and Nora's Infinite Playlist. I'm RJ. And I'm Nick. Let's get to it. Today is the 28th of December. We're taking a look at Nick and Nora's Infinite Playlist. That's right. This movie came out in 2008, and uh, it was it's a fun it's a fun watch. I think it was nominated for three uh, awards, satellite awards, but didn't get any, which is unfortunate. But I really like this movie because you know I I'm in, in this demographic, I guess, because I grew up in Jersey. Every now and then, I would run off to New York for little adventures, and and that was really yeah, the. But- it's beyond that too, because I I relate to it too, and it has nothing to do with the space. It's just these kind of adventures you have, and whatever in Seattle as well. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh no, I it's agree. Cool. It's it's set in New York with a bunch of teenagers from uh, Jersey, which I guess is why I kind of feel it. But really, the sense of adventure is what would really I gravitate to, and. and on top of that, not only the, the sense of adventure, but the innocence behind that adventure, you know, because it's not, it, it's not like you're, you're going out to do some really crazy stuff on purpose. Things just kind of happen that you kind of stumble into, and suddenly you have this really great evening that you'll never forget, and right. I, I kind of miss that, you know. Uh, yeah, I guess I do miss that, because, you know, I haven't had one of those adventures in years, you know, I'm... You know, I think my last great adventure was some 10 years ago, uh, in which case I would have been 18, you know, where I just kind of said, yes, I'm going to go and do this. And I ended so up in California. So clearly nostalgic about it. Yes, highly nostalgic. But there's more than that. There's, you know, just great characters, great adventure, great, you know, a lot of great it's stuff. It's fun. It's a well-made little movie. Yeah. Um, so you have uh, uh, Michael Sarah who plays uh, uh, the Nick of Nick and Nora, uh, Nick o- O'Leary, I believe it is, and Kat Dennings who plays... Uh, uh, Nora of Nick and Nora, and you have Nick's friends. He he's in an all gay band, even though he's straight. So it's him and these two other guys who both are gay, and uh, both both of them I really liked. I liked uh, the guys who played, and I have their names written down. Uh, Tom is Aaron Yu, and Deb is Ravi Gaffron, and they have Lothario, who I guess they meet uh, in the middle of the de- of the middle of the night, and uh, his name is Jonathan B. Wright, and I like that character too because. That's the sense of adventure, you know, where you're just going to meet people and, and befriend people overnight, and suddenly, like, just a lot of stuff happens. You know, it's just really cool. I, I like that. I dig that. It's just, it's just great. Oh, and I should note that it is based off of a book written by uh, Rachel Cohn and David Levithan. Levithan. I keep wanting to say Leviathan because it's almost like Leviathan. Levithan. Levithan. Yeah. I don't know. So the adventure really picks up when um, Nora's drunk friend Caroline, who's play, who's played by Ari Grainer. Um, gets drunk and she needs to go home because she's passing out and so her gay friends i'm her gay friends so nick's gay friends decide to take her while nick stays with uh nora because his gay friends really want nick and nora to hook up you know to get together to be an item um because nick's having trouble getting over a previous girlfriend trish who's played by uh alexis Zienna. There's just a tiny bit of Scott Pilgrim, like before Scott Pilgrim in this. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, it's hard to it's hard to not see that because he has like pretty much the same haircut and is Michael Sarah in the same role. <laughs> yeah. um, plus, there's that kind of teenage but, I mean, it, angsty. It gave me the same feeling before I even knew you know Scott Pilgrim movie would exist. You know, it gave me that feeling in just a little bit. So. Right, right. Just I guess maybe it proves that he's perfect for that role. I don't know. Very true. Yeah. Um. So so you're following following. Um, Nick and Nora, as they're trying to be set up by Nick's friends, plus Caroline goes missing, so they have to search um, search for Caroline. Plus, there's this favored band that everyone loves called Where's Fluffy, and you know they they're kind of this odd band who 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 doesn't. Which I really relate to this part because we did a lot of odd band little concerts in like gymnasiums and stuff. Yeah, yeah, and and what's what I really love is they kind of give clues as to where they're going to play next. So you really have to search for them, and only like the devout fans will find them. So that's really cool. Um, plus, you have you know all the great uh, New York uh, uh, scenes that that they have. You know, running running through New York, trying to find Caroline, um, going to these cool clubs, and and just you know having a night that's that's 
just epic. An epic night is, is what it was. So there is a lot of great stuff. Plus, there's some things about Nora's that she that she's trying to keep hidden, like who her father is and and what she has to offer the world. And just I don't and know. What, what's really her cool. name again? I I love her as an actress. Uh, Kat Dennings. Uh, wife and I both it just it really when oh she's in this. You know we get excited about the film. Yeah, and yeah, she does a really great job. She's she's one of those actresses that it just seems natural. Yeah. Like it it. It's angsty, and but it just doesn't seem forced. I mean, she's the one that's also in Thor, which is funny. And I yeah. think she saves that because I don't like Natalie Portman in that film. Uh, uh, she's like okay, she's but I, I, I just her, you know, she she puts in the humor and makes it all work, you know. So I, she, I think she's underrated, but I also think that she's going to grow into being like one of the actresses that we always, you know, people always love. Can't to stop see. talking about yet. Yeah. So yes, I do highly recommend this movie, uh, especially if you want that kind of innocent adventure that you, you're very fond of. From your childhood or from your teenage Yeah, another years. one that you may have missed. It was, uh, you know, big in its time for a little while, but... Uh, yeah, uh, it's definitely one that, that I kind of... I heard about, but I never went to go see, and then I saw it finally a couple years after... Or a year or two after it came out, and then I was like, I love this movie. And so when I saw it at Best Buy, I just had to get it. I love that movie. Would you put this or Wrist Cutters? Well, that's interesting. <laughs> That's interesting because, and, and this is odd, but it's, do this till you answer. it's interesting because of the women involved. I really love Shannon Sossman, um, and, I, and I think she's a very beautiful woman. Plus, I love Kat Dennings. I think she's a very beautiful woman, and they each have their own unique advantages, so I don't know. I, I don't. It's not based on who you think is hotter. No, 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 I know, I know, but, <laughs> but you know, women actually do sway my vote, which is unfortunate, but they do. Uh, but I guess Nick and Nora's because I can relate more to it than committing suicide and going to another <laughs> realm. So, okay, so Nick and enough. Nora's. Fair enough. To me, they just have kind of the same. They do. They do. And there's, there's, and yeah. Feel. And some of the jokes are kind of, you know, they're they're on par with each other because they they're kind of subtle jokes. But yeah, I think I think this one has more to offer than than Risk Cutters. But I do love Risk Cutters. All right, go check it out. It's not on Netflix. I don't think that's unfortunate, but yeah, uh, yeah readily available. So. Uh, if it sounds interesting, you won't be disappointed. All right, guys, thanks. Uh, please subscribe to our YouTube channel and uh, watch our great playlists. Uh, Game Labs has been a lot of fun. Yes, they have. And please leave comments. We love comments. And you can help support us by buying our wares at spiderwolf.com. That's right. T-shirts, card games, art prints, short story, and more. Oh. Oh. Yes. <laughs> My mic, it wouldn't, like, cock. Weird. Oh, well. Next week, we start off with Batman, the killing joke. Uh, that's why you like it. Put your name on it. This movie has Nick's name all over it. Uh, so really, on the front, on the side, probably somewhere on the back. It's literally on there. <laughs> get it? That's the joke. Yeah, I think we get it. <laughs> I know it's a Christmas mug, so sue me. My my nephew made this for me. It's a nice mug. It's just not Christmas anymore. So to me it's Christmas until January. To you it's Christmas like from before Thanksgiving <laughs> till <laughs> Yeah, kind of, you know, uh Halloween-ish. I need at least, you know, like two full months, which is basically what we have. Because as soon as Thanksgiving is over, like that night. You know, we wait till 12, and then we, you know, decorate the tree and all that stuff. And then we make sure we get it done in the first week, and then I'm talking way too much about Christmas, because it's, like, so long for the next one. I like Christmas, man. I don't leave my lights up all year round or something. Hey, guys, so we only have a few more days until the end of the world, and we're doing Nick and Nora's Infinite Playlist. Because, you know, it's 2012, and there's only a few more days. Right. So we're screwed. We might as well, you know, review a great movie. <laughs> That's right, because the Mayan calendar set... Uh, well, the Mayan calendar stops after 2012. That's right. So we don't really know if they just got lazy and didn't finish it. Yeah, I was going to say, either either they knew the end of the world, which everybody, you know, that's that's what it is, or they were lazy, but of course they're not lazy. No, the Mayans, they didn't. <laughs> of course they would do thousands of years in the future. Of course. <laughs> Stupid human. <laughs> Beep. <laughs> <laughs> so Nick and Nora's Infinite Playlist came out. Yeah, so we're going to continue after that. <laughs> it's the end of the world as we know it. Yeah, I hate R.E.M. Really? Yes.
very much. I kind of like that song, but I hate R.E.M. as a whole. Douchebag. What did they ever do to you, you say? Well, how about Steal My Firstborn? What? <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> what? They sonically molested me for years. Well, that, that's, that's true. That's, that's, <laughs> that's your, a true story. That's your fault. <laughs> you let them sonically oh, abuse you. Yeah. Thanks a lot. <laughs> Jerk. RJ needs counseling. <laughs> Badly. No, it's like you can't help it. You know, the radio would just force its way in and they'd molest you. So here you heard it for your first. Uh, R.E.M. molested me. In the ear hole. <laughs> uh, yep, that's right. I went right up to the line and then jumped right over it. Yes, he did. 